Wow, everything has changed in a very short period of time. AI tools like ChatGPT and GPT-4 are taking over and completely changing both education and the landscape of learning technical skills. I felt that I needed to make a video to address some important things. So first, in the new age of AI, is it still important to learn data science? Second, if so, what is the best way to learn these skills by leveraging the new technologies that are out there? And how would I do that if I was to start over again now? And three, what does the future of the domain of data science look like? As AI continues to evolve, will data scientists become obsolete or will their role become more crucial than ever? From a personal perspective, I still feel that I add more value to my clients than just the AI would. And I've been able to increase my work output by at least two times with the new tools that have been available to me. At least right now, I feel like AI won't take my job, but realistically, the future is more uncertain than ever. Before you get scared of jobs disappearing, let's take a quick look at a scenario. In some future, you run a company that has AI doing your analytics work for you. Who would you want running the AI, prompting it, and overseeing it? Would you want someone with a background in data science or software engineering to oversee these programs? Or would you like someone that just doesn't have any background in any of this stuff. I think the answer is pretty obvious. You'd want someone with experience and knowledge of how to work with data running these AI systems. Now in the short term, this scenario is hopefully hypothetical, but it does give me some confidence that some aspect of these skills really do have resilience, even if we make rapid AI advancements. Even if the landscape changes where data scientists are doing less hands-on coding, I still feel like these skills you develop from learning this field will be very useful in a world more heavily integrated with AI. And don't forget, AI is grounded in data science. At some level, we're integrated into the system more so than any other career. In addition to that, AI still hallucinates, it has problems with it, and we'll need as many people as possible with good knowledge to oversee this and act as a feedback loop. While I'd mentioned that I'm uncertain about the future of data science work, there's one thing that I'm quite certain about. I'm certain that data, analytics, and AI they'll play a bigger and bigger role of our lives moving forward. This video would end right here if I didn't think it was worth learning data science. To be clear, I still think it is 100% worth it, even in an uncertain future. But to be honest, learning data science just isn't enough anymore. You need to learn how to use the new AI tools as well. The funny thing is, learning both data science and these AI tools is easier than learning just data science alone. Let me explain. As it so happens, you're entering at the perfect time to learn these two domains together. If you learn data science by leveraging the new AI tools that are out there, you get a twofold benefit. First, you get a more personalized and iterative education experience from learning the data domain with the AI tools. And two, you also get an upskill in the AI tools at the same time. You literally get twice the benefit for half the work, if my calculations are correct. If the ability to use AI tools can help you land a job and do better work, isn't it better to know how to work with them than to ignore them altogether? In the last three months, I feel like I've learned more about data science than I have in the last three years combined. I attribute the majority of this to my use of ChatGPT, mostly the one using GPT-4. So how do you do this? How do you actually learn data science with AI? This right now is exactly what I would do if I had to start over with all these AI tools available to me. So first, I develop a roadmap. You can do this by looking through other courses, or you can just do this by having a conversation with ChatGPT. You can literally ask it to make you a data science learning roadmap based on your learning objectives. And if you don't have learning objectives, you can also ask it to create a list for you and you can find one you like from that. Next, I would design ChatGPT to be my tutor. So with GPT-4, you can create personas, which is probably my favorite feature. So you could tell ChatGPT that you're one of the best data science teachers in the world, Please answer my data science questions in a way that will help me develop the best understanding of the domain. And please use as many real world or practical examples and give me practice problems that are relevant along the way. I've experimented with this and I've really loved the results. After that, I develop a course of study. So I'm almost definitely biased, but I think free courses or paid courses like mine on 365 Data Science are still a good option for creating structure for learning. As you go through your course of study, you can ask your ChatGPT tutor to give you examples, expand on topics, or even give you practice problems. And if you're a little more advanced on the AI front, you could use a tool like AutoGPT to generate a course curriculum for you. I might try to do this and see what it comes up with. And if I do, I'll share that in my GitHub. I also interviewed GPT-4 on my podcast, and I go a little bit more into what AutoGPT is, so check out the link to that above. If you're already comfortable with coding, you could probably skip to doing projects. I've personally learned a lot from doing projects in tandem with ChatGPT. I did this for the real estate Kaggle challenge, and I'll release a video on that pretty soon. If it's your very first project, just asking for it to do things is fine, 
but as you progress, you wanna be more intentional and interactive with how you use it. Let's compare how maybe a beginner versus a more advanced practitioner should go about learning on a project. So a beginner project walkthrough could look like this. So first, you feed it the information about the rows and columns of your data. Next, you ask it to create boilerplate code to explore this data for null values, for outliers, and for normality. You ask it what questions you should ask of this data, and then you ask it to clean the data and build a model for you to make the prediction on the dependent variable of your choice. Now, this seems like you have ChatGPT or the AI doing all the work for you, but you still have to get this project to run on your environment. You're also prompting and problem solving as you go along. There's no guarantee that this will work like there is when you're copying someone else's code and running it. So I feel like this is a nice learning middle ground for involvement. You're still involved, you're still prompting the machine, but in this case, it's creating all the output. Now let's think about how a more advanced practitioner would use this. So you could follow the same steps of generating boilerplate code, but this should probably be expanded upon. So you might wanna experiment with more hands-on exploration of data and hypothesis testing. So maybe choose one or two questions you wanna answer with the data and descriptive statistics and go about analyzing those. For someone who's done a few projects, I recommend generating some of the code yourself. So actually coding. So let's say you made a very simple bar chart in Plotly. You could feed that into ChatGPT and ask it to reformat it to change the color, to change the scale, to add a different legend. By doing this, you can rapidly iterate on visualizations and you can see in real time how different tweaks to the code change the graph. This immediate feedback is one of the best possible things for learning. It is important that you do look at the changes and you internalize them though. Also, if you don't understand something, just ask ChatGPT right there to explain what it did. This was one of the biggest eye openers for me. More advanced practitioners should also focus more heavily on data engineering and the pipelines for productionizing code. These are things that you still need to be fairly hands-on with. I found that ChatGPT was able to get me sort of part of the way there for these, but I really needed to do a lot of debugging myself. After that, you might wanna have the AI go through and run some algorithms, do some parameter tuning, because to be honest, I think the model selection and parameter tuning is probably the part of data science that will be automated the fastest. Maybe not for the highest level Kagglers, but for normal practitioners, I think parameter tuning will see really diminishing returns compared to other parts of the process. So you should focus your time on maybe feature engineering and feature creation. This is something that AI models can help with, but I haven't found them to be super great or better than I am at creating new variables. So that's to say that after you've created some decent models, see what data you can add or what features you can create and what transformations you can do to improve your results. Now, in a world with these advanced AI tools, I think it's even more important to do projects than ever. You have to build things and you have to share your work. Fortunately, with these AI tools, it's also easier than ever to do that. It's easier to spin up a web app. It's easier to work with new packages that you've never used before. I would highly encourage you to create real world impact and tangible things in your data science work. This will be the new way to differentiate when others are also using these tools to learn and build. The world is changing and so is data science. Are you ready to embrace the challenge and create real world impact with your projects. I alluded to it earlier and in a few videos that I released recently, but I think the way we all work is changing for good. I think it's an uncertain time for all fields, including data science. On the other hand, I think data science is an excellent mix of technical and problem solving skills that scale well to almost any new world or field. I've talked at length in my podcast about how I think data scientists are one of the closest fields to pure entrepreneurship out there. I think that in a world changed by AI, will need to leverage that entrepreneurial spirit as much as possible. I hope that this helps to encourage you to leverage AI to learn data science as effectively as possible. Good luck on your data science journey.